A native of Atlanta, Jessica Gordon has been crafting her own unique style of painting. My artwork has been a roller coaster ride. I feel like I've painted my way through art history a little bit, and um, I've studied a lot of color and color psychology and done some career things to sort of follow that pursuit, and I feel like now my worlds are merging together. The new series that I'm starting is, um, I'm calling it um, psychological portraiture. So basically what I'm doing is painting a portrait of somebody that's non-representational, so it's not a figurative portrait, it's a um, portrait based on what they say. There's something about the preciousness of painting on canvas sometimes that can be disruptive to the process. Like, oh, I, this has to be a certain way, it has to be so perfect, and I need to get back to sort of that, um, that creative connection, and that's what I'm working on right now. So I'm painting on this non-precious, throwaway butcher paper, and um, painting fast and furious, and just trying to get some stuff out of the way so that doing some intuitive painting so that I can connect a little bit better with the people that I want to do these portraits of. Jessica looks to some of the art world's most influential feminist painters for inspiration. Miriam Shapiro is a huge one for me. Um, a lot of the feminist artists are really big and influential for me. Um, Judy Chicago. Um, Judy Chicago recently wrote a book about Frida Kahlo um, and I a couple years ago was able to um, go to DC to see um, to see Judy Chicago talk about the book um, and I got an opportunity to thank her for just everything that she did in the 70s to move it so that I could be an artist today and I don't know any I don't know anyone who's not or any woman who's not somehow influenced by George O'Keefe um, but then Janine Antoni was a huge influence too in school. Um, she had an exhibit at the High that was really powerful to me. So a lot of installation artists um, are really impressive to me. Over the years, Jessica has watched as the Atlanta art scene has expanded to the point it even rivals other well-known locations. I am in awe over how much art there is here. I don't know if it's, you know, SCAD's influence and the money that they sort of brought here or um, the expansion of the high. I was floored. Flo I mean, my, my dormitory that I stayed in is gone and there's a whole, that's right where the high is now, the contemporary art wing is. I feel like it's almost as much happening here as, you know, in New York. It seems like it's Jessica considers herself an unconventional kind of artist and uses that to motivate herself and others. I'm not the kind of artist that should be um, in the middle of 18 acres of woods with some little art studio there. I'm definitely better off among others. I'm inspired by what people do. I'm inspired by people who follow passions. I believe art to be healing. I believe creating to be healing. I believe um, I like trying to help other people find their own voice in painting and creating as well. So um, if I can inspire anyone to pick up a brush, I feel successful. Hailing from Indiana, Jacob Deaton decided to pick up a guitar instead of a basketball. I was in the Air Force and um, I kind of started getting serious about guitar towards the end of my enlistment around 2004. Um, and I got out of the Air Force with the intention of sort of being a songwriter. Um, and it kind of, you know, things morph and change over time, you're interested, but that's kind of how it all started. So, you know, there was an interest around 2004 to kind of take it from beyond a, a hobby to something that was, you know, more serious. Um, the first memory of music I had was um, trading like a Chipper Jones rookie card for my cousin, my much younger cousin's George Thorgood and the shortest, you know, tape, you know, the bad to the bone or whatever. Um, like, uh, I 
gosh, I traded that, which I don't know if that was a good trade or not, you know what I mean, now that he's... <laughs> but um, my mom had a lot of Madonna playing when I was a kid. Um, like the early Madonna, like, I mean, I don't... I think m most Madonna is pretty killing, but, but her early stuff was really, really killing. When I first started trying to pick up jazz guitar, Grant Green was like my man, because he kind of bridged this gap between the blues that I was listening to and then like the swing stuff that I wanted to play. For guitar, you know, you go through West Montgomery and you trace back to Charlie Christian and um, then all the old Delta, you know, musicians too, like the blues guys, like, um, you know, Sun House has really been uh, cool um, for me. Um, and, you know, Robert Johnson and, and uh, you know, people like that. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? And miss it each night and day Cause I know that I'm not wrong The feeling's getting stronger The longer I stay away Miss those moss-covered vines Those tall sugar pines The nightingale used to sing And I'd like to see that lazy Mississippi hurrying into spring. Um, but like I was really going through like some some post-traumatic woman stuff where you know she you know basically had thrown my heart out to dry kind of thing. You know. So anyway, so I show up at this jam and um, you know they asked me to sit and I said okay. It's like the end of the night and. Um, I started singing a song um, called the Tennessee Waltz. Anyway, um, I just remember being in the middle and singing it, and then this one guy in the uh, in the audience started laughing, like while I was singing this song, and I was like really singing. And a few choice words, I kind of told the dude to shut up, and uh, and uh, but I said it real like cleverly and humorly, and like you know the audience kind of started laughing and whatever. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, you know, the host came up and like ripped the mic from me and said, we don't talk like that in this club. And But it's funny to me is that people do talk like that in that club. I, I, it was just weird because I've been there. But anyway, uh, I ended up getting like, you know, kind of kicked off stage and, you know, stuff. So that's, I think that's the only time I've ever really been kicked off stage for, for anything. At the end of the day, I'm just trying to play music as good as I can. Uh, maybe maybe it will lead to something, you know, maybe or something. You know, I don't, I don't really know <laughs> where I'm going. The moonlight on the bayou, a Creole tune that fills the air. I dream about magnolias and bloom. I'm wishing that you were there. In the heart of Decatur, there's a revolution growing to take back the donut. At Revolution Donuts, they pride themselves on making all of their donuts and glazes from scratch.
Revolution Donuts started out modestly, but they quickly realized they had something special. Keeping true to their values and with community support, Revolution Donuts is looking forward to the future.